Hello, everybody. We're going to talk about the comment tracker tool, and we're going to go into some detail as to why we care and what it does for us. So let's talk about briefly what the comment tracker tool does. It tracks and displays comments on our screen from various locations, and it's very important the fact that it brings those comments into the screen or onto the screen, and we'll see why in a moment. Why do we want to bring in our comments? Well, it's going to encourage audience interaction or participation. And the more participation we can get or interaction with our audience, the more value we end up bringing to them and they bring to us. So I've made up kind of a, a bunch of different acronyms for things. Um, by now, many of you know that HOA here is standing for Hangouts on Air, but you might not know what I'm using PPI for. Um, I've come from a graphic background, so in the past this was pixels per inch, but I've rephrased it now. I repurposed it, and I focus on three aspects that Hangouts on Air can do. They can be allowing, or they allow you to become very personal. Your brand or you get to become very personal with the audience. They also allow you to do presentations, and by the way, that's what almost everybody does is presentations, and they seem to avoid some of the personal parts, and the last part, which I think is incredibly important, the interactive part. That's for the eye. The interactive part, I think, is one of the most unique values offered by Hangouts on Air, and I sure hope people take advantage of it. One of the reasons why we use Comment Tracker is to allow us to be interactive. So with true interaction, we get to build trust. For example, if I'm using the Comment Tracker tool, which allows me to bring in a comment from a viewer, right onto the screen, it can be part of the show, and we can then address that comment. This allows people to know that I'm not just speaking from a script. I'm actually able to interact with the things that they're asking or talking about, and that is what brings trust, and that's what I think we want to do. I'm a little concerned, which we're going to see in a moment, about some of the tools that Google's been introducing, because I believe they actually take away some of the interaction. For example, a common question is, do I use the comment tracker or do I use the Q&A app? Google has made a Q&A app, which stands for questions and answers. And I find that app to be useful in two very specific situations, when you have a very large or a very small Hangout and Air gathering. In other words, it's so large that you'd never be able to get to all the comments, and so you let the Q&A app handle a lot of that, because then the crowd votes for which comment or question they want to see. Or it's so small that nobody's there. And so you don't want people to know that nobody's there, so you turn on the Q&A app to kind of hide the fact that there's nobody there. Either way, large or small, in my opinion, commenting dies when you're using the Q&A app. It's just there for questions and answers, and it takes away some of this interaction. But I will go into more detail of that later on. Let's talk about the comment tracker and how we get it going. Inside the Hangout interface is the tool we're using, and we're using a specific version of the comment tracker, which shows us on the left where the little yellow circle is, it's two green icons, or the double bubble. This is called a standalone comment tracker. It works, if you'll note in the blue area, it works best with public activity. It will not work with private posts. You cannot bring comments in from the private world, only from public activity. If you happen to be on the right side here, Using Comment Tracker with a Hangout and Error, which is what we're doing now, it will normally bring in that YouTube video, which is connected to the Hangout and Error automatically. It's automatically added in for us. What you're going to do is when you've loaded up the Comment Tracker tool, that'll automatically take you to the upper right area where it says Sources, and you're going to type in or paste in the source link or the URL that you want to get your comments from. So. We found that somewhere, we pasted it in, and then we click where the little yellow circle is, the plus, that's going to add that source of a post, for example, to bring comments from. So once we click the plus, it then loads in another one, which you'll see on the right here with the bright green, and that is now a new source added. And it's a good idea when you've added a source from which to track comments to click where the yellow circle is, there's a little round arrow thing that's called checking reshares, or at least that's what the old version called it. So when we click on that, that allows you to check to see if that particular source has been shared multiple times and it allows you to add those sources as well because you never know where people are going to be adding their comments. The tracker tool allows us to get them from lots of places. So while it's loading up those sources, you'll see a little spinning indicator in the upper right. That's where our, our yellow oval is. And you sort of let it 
do that. It's going to take a little bit of time depending on how many sources it has to go try to find. Then, once it's done spinning, we're going to go back to the upper left portion. And this is sort of new if you're new to this version of the tool. There's three little lines. The developer, his name's Gervin, or Gerwin, he calls it the hamburger menu. It's basically the navigation icon. You click on that, and it lets you see other parts of the tool. And in this case, we want to go to the stream, because the stream is where you get to see and interact with the comments. So we're going to navigate to the stream through the navigation menu by clicking on stream, and this is what you'll see. So I put a little yellow circle around the word stream, just so you know where we are. And there's a yellow box around your main tools that you get to use. We have the ability to pin it. I'm sorry. We have the ability to display it. That's what the eyeball is. Pin it, which helps it stay put on the top, and trash it when we're done with it. So those are the main things we can do. I'm going over this rather quickly. We're going to do another version of this training for the members where we go into a lot more detail. So when we have a comment that we want to bring onto the screen, we're going to press that eyeball, and it does this. It brings that comment right onto the screen. It's become part of the video, part of our live broadcast. It highlights the person's profile picture, or the page in this case, it's Nodex, and it shows the text of their comment. This allows people to interact live with our show. So once the comment's visible on the screen and we decide we don't want to see it any longer, we're done with it, we click on the little eyeball with a slash. And just so you know, there's always going to be at least two locations to do that, one right on the comment itself or two right above it at the very top in case that comment's moved out of the way and you can't find it. You can always click the little slashed eyeball on the top. As a reminder, this is the standalone version of Comment Tracker. It is not, if you'll note on the left, it is not the one that's part of the Hangout Toolbox. The Hangout Toolbox is an app that has other apps within it. One of its apps is called Comment Tracker. It is not the double bubble, but is a single bubble. So basically, not the tool inside the Hangout Toolbox, but the standalone version is what we're talking about because it gives us the ability to do a lot more functions than the one that's built into the toolbox. So that's what we're using right now. This has been a quick overview. If you want complete training on this and other Hangout-related items, I'd encourage you strongly to join the Hangout Mastery membership. And here's a link to get there.